Hello, my name is Kira Robinson and I was supervised by Dr. Ron Dixon. I conducted research to improve the understanding of dissemination of antimicrobial resistance and its impact on humans from imported edible shrimp. Antimicrobial resistance threatens public health. Therefore, we need a better understanding of how AMR is spread through the environment into humans and through animals. E. coli bacteria is widely abundant in the environment. This leads to bacteria being exposed to antibiotics as they are unregulated in some regions of the world, particularly in low-income countries. Wildlife can then become hosts of AMR bacteria as the antibiotics are discarded into water sources where the bacteria is then transferred into the animals. The aims of my research is to gain an understanding of possible routes which AMR could be spread from imported shrimp. I also wanted to improve the understanding of how resistant bacteria behaves in the food chain and also investigate whether cooking the imported shrimp as instructed by the government would break down the antimicrobial resistant genes. The shrimp were imported from Vietnam and India. These shrimp were measured into different weights and water was added to each sample before putting in the stomacher. These were then spread plated onto the eosinomethylene blue agar and placed into the incubator overnight at 37 degrees Celsius. Then a series of tests were carried out on the colonies which grew on the agar. E. coli has the characteristics of being gram negative, oxidase negative and catalase positive. However, Supermarket C had no colonies with the characteristics of E. coli. Therefore, these shrimp were no longer useful for the research. The E. coli colonies were then streak plated onto nutrient agar which contained ampicillin at a concentration of 20%. All the E. coli colonies showed growth on the plates. These ampicillin resistant colonies were then transferred into nutrient broth and left in an incubator overnight at 37 degrees Celsius. Plasmids were then extracted from these samples and their DNA concentration was checked using a nanodrop. The samples which had a concentration of DNA over 50% and a control of DH5 alpha were then put into three different temperature conditions which were at 63 degrees Celsius, 72 degrees Celsius or 90 degrees Celsius all for two minutes. Then the DNA concentration was measured again on the nanodrop. These plasmids were then put into a thermal cycler for a polymerase chain reaction. Then a gel electrophoresis was carried out on the samples from the thermal cycler machine. 14 out of the 40 eosinmethylene blue plates grew colonies. After the test, seven samples were categorised as E. coli. All seven were found to be ampicillin resistant as the colonies grew on the nutrient agar plates containing ampicillin. The gel electrophoresis showed only 9 out of 18 isolates contained a plasmid. The plasmids all had the same size approximately 700 kilobases. These 9 isolates which are shown are plasmids originating from DH5-alpha or supermarkets B and D. Therefore, we can conclude that E. coli was found in the shrimp from three different supermarkets, all of which contained ampicillin resistant genes. This resistance could lead to antibiotics not being able to be an effective treatment in the future. Furthermore, no changes in the plasmid sizes occurred between the three different temperature conditions. Therefore, the higher temperatures most likely had not broken down the AMR gene. This requires further research to be carried out to see how the AMR is spread by the bacteria. This would require a transformation to be done. There were many different challenges which arose 
while doing this research. Unfortunately, it took me about five weeks to find E. coli in the shrimp in three out of the four supermarkets. This was due to agars being un overrun by different bacteria. I tried out seven different types of agar and six of these were actually meant to be specialised in growing E. coli. Unfortunately, most did not work. Additionally, my first plasmid extraction was unsuccessful as I did not produce large amounts of DNA concentration which would have meant that my PCRs would not have worked. Finally, my last issue was that my gel electrophoresis did not work very well the first time and I am very unsure as to why this happened.